Yes, welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. And right now, you know, I got my special guest. Oh, oh my God, they are so legends. They are nightlife legends. They took over the club, you know, back in the day. Then they took a step back, and this time, even better. We got Tuana and Dio Pal from Trizar in the building. How y'all doing today? Hey, Ken. Hi. Hi. Yes, and by the way, they are both my sisters. Yes, yes, we got them on the show. Yes, how y'all doing? Great. We're doing good. We're doing good. We're so happy to be on your show. It's an honor. Yes, and yes, welcome back to you as well, Dale. You know, and you're killing your um, coaching out loud podcast, by the way. I just want to say yes. that. Well, you know, let's let's get on with the interview. All right, we ready. All right, so how did y'all come up with the name Hunger for More Entertainment, and what did y'all did that get y'all into the nightlife industry? Well, that was so long ago. I really can't remember how we came up with the name, but we wanted a catchy name. And we wanted a name that didn't distinguish if we were girls or guys. So we picked a name that was kind of unisex. So people won't look at us like we're girls. And we also loved Lloyd Banks at that time. I think that was the name of his album. So that had a lot of influence on it. Also, um, and the, you said, when did we start? Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah. 2004, 2000, yeah, 2004. Dang, I was through high school when y'all started. Dang, that's really long ago. <laughs> Jesus, geez, Louise. So, <laughs> so, so, what was your first experience? No, I mean, what was your first venue? And how was your first experience? Um, well, our first experience, well, venue we did in the city was Star Nightclub. We were doing events in Brooklyn. We was doing events in, at the lab in Brooklyn. It's gone, long gone. But <laughs> our first official like event in the city was at Star Star Lounge. Mm. I don't know if it's still around. Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> yes, and that night um, was horrible. No one came for us, and the party itself was a flop. All the promoters did really bad, and then it was a tra- tragedy that happened that night. Um, a guy had a fight and he died. Like he fell and he died. And that wasn't anything to do with us, but it was just an outsider. But it just was like, that was just a bad memory of that night. That's crazy, that's crazy. So how y'all come up with being young females in a male type industry? Mm. I mean, how y'all come up, I should say? Well, our our experience, as far as I come up in the nightlife, was very interesting because not only were we females, we were also very, very young. So we were not, I mean, at one point, we weren't even old enough to get in the club. So it was like, we were very ambitious, though. So it was like, we was here to get it done. So at the end of the day, we had to drive. So it was like, they had no other like way but to respect us. So we did it. We did it. We had to push and fight our way through it. But we did. Then mm. you want to add on to it? She can. Yes, I would also add that. Yes, we were really young. We. I remember. Um, I was in college, so I would come to the club after class, and I would do my homework in the club. And <laughs> we didn't even get carded because it was our event. So mm. we just was able to walk in. The bouncers didn't ask us for ID. But when we went out to other events, we had to use which is, God forgive us. <laughs> we were using one I, one of our friends was 21 at the time. We used her ID, like all of us. I don't know how we did it, <laughs> but we used her ID. Shout out to Keisha. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, shout out, yeah, shout out, yeah, shout out to Keisha. I hope she listened to the show. <laughs> yeah. And then one time, a funny story really quick. I went to, we went to a club and the guy, I guess he noticed it was a fake ID. He, not a fake ID, it was a real ID, but it wasn't me. And he said, don't ever come back to this club again or I will call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> that was really funny. Yeah, but um, <laughs> back to the original question. It was very hard at times because people, they looked at us one, um, one that we were a woman and we were mm-hmm. really young. So we had to really work hard. We had to be on point so people could really see like these girls, they may be young, they may be black but they are, they're coming 
um, to do the business well, and they deliver what they say they're going to do. Nice, nice. And I show y'all killed it in the industry, you know, <laughs> and to everybody who probably look up to y'all now, you know, after all these years. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your biggest highlight from Hunger for More? Um, um, I would say our biggest highlight was uh, we had a thing where we did a lot of things different. So everyone was doing like their one year anniversary. So instead we did a one and a half year anniversary mm. and we had LeBron James um, mm. host our event. But the funny story behind that was when we met LeBron, you know, it was like, no, 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 no. It's 60,000 to him doing it with us, mm-hmm. which was a awesome experience and then the then too we did our secret location party where we because we didn't have a venue mm. so but nobody knew we didn't have a venue but we knew mm. so we did a secret location to still get people to reserve and things like that and then we got the venue probably like two days before and then we released the venue and it turned out to be a great success like the whole Cleveland Cavaliers came out the um all the Knicks it was just like it was awesome to this day. Like everybody still talks about, oh, you girls was the first ones to bring LeBron to New York City. So nice, big things, yes. big things. <laughs> Would you like to add? Yeah. Would you like to add, Dio? Oh yes, I would say that process was not easy. A lot of people, they, I mean, like in general, like if you're trying to get a celebrity to host your event or just do business with them, it's not just like a one, two, three step like oh they're just gonna say yes it was actually like a year process of me and um you know trying to get him to say yes Mm. because um when we first met lebron and we met him in cancun and his manager was really excited because they saw that we were young girls and you know the first conversation was um where do you party in new york he said i go to 4040 i'm like that's that's whack and they all started laughing because i'm like that's not a place to party when you come to new york Mm. so we said we wanted to do an event for him and um during the process we had to build a business relationship with his you know his team and everything like that for them to trust us to do a party and then the party kind of fell in our lap because a promoter which his name will remain (laughs) nameless (laughs) <laughs> he did a fake event that had LeBron name on it and we were, were supposed to be the first promoters to do an event in New York so I questioned it I was like oh I thought we were going to be the first ones what's going on and he said send me the flyer and he said I never approved this flyer and the party was canceled and the venue was gone <laughs> So, I mean, you have to do things correctly when it comes to celebrity. You can't do fake things and think they're not going to find out. But um, during that, we built, he built, we built trust with them and they were they, in loyalty. So um, they just gave us the party like, you know, we're, we're coming here. Just do it. Find something. And just do it. So, yeah. And just to add on a little bit what Dan said, he went basically from a client to a partner because they partnered with us on that event so that was awesome also yeah nice nice good stuff so what made y'all take a step back from the nightlife industry okay well i'll start um after a while it 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 came it became very um hard doing events like um parties were were not the, the, the nightlife scene was changing and it's still to this day I feel like it has not been the same um, a lot of clubs were closing which that was part of our money and then the venue that we were making the most money from we kept hearing rumors like oh this, this club is going to close and we're like whatever no they're not they're making so much money through, you know from our party so they're not closing they're making thousands a night like we're their best uh, you know we're their best weekly night party they're not closing and a lot of our friends who had owned venues and clubs in New York City I kept saying, no, your your party is about to, you know, be gone. I'm like, no, it's not. So um, one day we came to the club and it was like chained up. And the, the way the, the owner, he didn't handle it correctly. He didn't really give us a notice that the club was going to close. So after that, we had, we had a few parties here and there, but it just wasn't the same. And then also lifestyle change, you know, God was really pulling us from the club scene 
and pulling on hearts because it was like sometimes I'll be in a club and I just was like, I don't want to be here. Like, I'm over this. I'm tired of this. Just not feel, I just felt out of place. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you could try to be, do whatever you want, but if God has a call in your life, he's going to pull you out of what you're doing, like, regardless of what. So it was just like, everything. and then after that, every party we would do, it would just would be a bad event. Yeah. And we had a great track record of doing great parties, big parties, music, police parties, like, we just everything was just, like, it was just at a standstill. So I knew that was God getting our attention. And then just the passion was really gone. Yeah. Anything went at... I agree with everything that they all said. It's basically the tug of God, the prayers, of our parents and our family that said, you know, this is not where I was going to be. And they, their prayers are basically answered. So, mm. yeah. All right, good stuff. Amen. Amen to the parents. <laughs> so, what is, Amen. <laughs> so, what is Twizzard? Well, Twizzard is our non, our, Twizzard is our organization that we have now, which is the World is the Girls Runway. Um, it's a for-profit right now organization that we empower girls to become entrepreneurs because when we were doing Hunger for More, we didn't have those mentors or those resources where we can really had took our business to the level that it could have been. There was a lot of potential in Hunger for More, but there was also a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things that we could have did, like the event with LeBron James by itself, it's like it could have been a hundred times it was a great event but now you look back it's like oh it could have been a hundred times better mm-hmm. if we knew how to do this this and this and this so that's basically where the passion came from with knowing that we went through having a business at 19 20 years old and want to pour into these girls to make sure they don't make, they don't make the same mistakes that we made mm. all right so what made y'all take this venture as far as um, the, the world's best. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I believe it's purpose because I believe that um, it is our purpose, part of our purpose. And um, it's like doing what we do. It's like we're always getting confirm- confirmations from God. Like if there's a woman that comes that to us for advice about how to start a business or there's a young girl that is just so passionate about um doing business and then last year we went to Barbados to empower young girls to be entrepreneurs and it was so um, encouraging to us we came there to encourage them but I left encouraged because some of them just didn't believe that they could become entrepreneurs but after we gave our presentation and our workshop they were empowered they wanted to like stay in contact with us and it was just a blessing and it showed that you know God is faithful and when he called you to do something, he will make sure that there are people that need you. And I think that we continue to just meet people. And it's not just only girls. It's a lot of women that we connect with that are like, listen, I need, you know, I need advice. I need help. And a lot of things we do behind the scenes, we don't post it on social media, but it's a blessing to be able to empower women. And then too, when we started the World's Fair Runway, now I feel like this is women entrepreneurs is very big now back then it was not a lot of like empowerment about entrepreneurs women being entrepreneurs it was just about you know the men so i think that really put a push in our spirit to do it Mm. would you like to add to one um she said she praised some it up for me okay okay good good (laughs) so what is your biggest achievement with trizor so far Um, well, I would also say yes to Barbados when we got to speak in Barbados to the girls. Also, us being recognized by Councilwoman Tremaine Wright for all the community work we have done. Yes. Mm. Hey, good stuff. And I would just say, like, we have a few things that we're working on we can't say yet, but um, once it's you know finalized and just some of the partnerships that we're working on is going to be a big um a big thing that's going to be for us okay okay nice which kind of what kind of was about to ask me my next question but i guess that's kind of confirmed um <laughs> your next project <laughs> well we we have some stuff that we can actually talk about as far as our next project um it's we have we, we we're working on um having courses 
online courses for women and, and girls that are interested in coming entrepreneurs. There's books that's in the works that's coming out. We have books that's lined up that's going to be dropping this year. Um, tons of events we're planning. So there's things that's happening all outside of other things that we can't talk about. Okay. Yes. Okay, nice, nice. I'm looking forward to the project to come out. And I'm pretty sure everybody is as well. So what would you have to say to anybody that going the same route as you? Okay, you wanna go first? I will say, um, pray. Always pray about your purpose because sometimes people think, oh, I'm just gonna wake up one day and know my purpose. I feel like for my, well, for we could say for both of us, but um, purpose was not like, we knew our purpose right away. It took, you know, doing other things that we were passionate about and it led us to our purpose. So sometimes you can, some people just don't want to do anything and you have to start doing other stuff, finding certain interests, certain things that you're passionate about and I believe it will lead you to your purpose. But you can't be standstill and not doing anything and think that one day you're just gonna find out what your purpose is because sometimes we have assignments in our life that um, lead us to our purpose. So I would say focus on purpose, have a prayer life, make that sure that God is head of your life because he will lead you to what you are called to do and just always remember that you're doing it to help people sometimes we can be very selfish and like oh it's all about me on social media you know want to make your name great but purpose always includes people so if you have a heart to serve people and help people life will be great mm -hmm. yes like danielle said prayer definitely is the secret sauce to all things um also start with your why, why you're doing this. That passion behind what you do will push you through the difficult times because entrepreneurship is not easy mm -hmm. as far as everything. So and there are times where people want to just give up, but then they remember who and why they're doing it. So that will get you through everything. And it's worth the fight at the end of the day. Everything that you want to do, that, that dream, that passion, that everything that's placed in your heart, when you actually do it, it's worth it. And they just like, go for it. At the end of the day, they can either say yes or they can say no. And it's like, you're gonna get a few no's before you get a yes. And then when you get a yes, then hey, you forget all the no's you got anyway. Right. And also I will add one more thing. Mm -hmm. uh, don't think that you could become an overnight success. And this is um, reference to when we did events as well. Like we did a lot of great things. We did a lot of great events and it wasn't overnight. Like we were really hustling hard, going out there. Um, getting emails like we have a crazy email list thousands of emails but we worked hard to get those emails <laughs> we, we were clipboard girls yeah. like we went out and it's now it's easier because it has we did our events before social media yeah. before Facebook before Instagram before all these platforms so we really had to work hard we did a lot of footwork now it's easier so I feel like it's no excuse you have to just grind and grind to be successful and it's not going to happen overnight sometimes it takes five years to get that one good year to be successful so yes yes you're definitely right thank you for those wise words and you know i want to thank both of y'all for being on my show you know i you know i appreciate y'all my sisters you know. oh, thank you. We appreciate you so um you know where can they reach you you know your social media where they can reach you let's drop it now Okay, um, on Facebook, you can reach us at The World is a Girl's Runway. Um, on Instagram, it is Twizar, T-W-I-S-A-G-R. And um, email, I guess. Oh, tw Twitter, Twitter. Um, Twitter is the same as tw Twizar, T-W-I-S-A-G-R. Mm. And I personal, well, I'll give you my personal Instagram. Y'all can follow me on IG. Um, it's Danielle, D A N I E L L E P Y L E underscore at on Instagram. And Danielle Pal on Facebook, my like page. Nah, y'all not getting my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. well, and also, I coaching out loud is my coaching company yes. as well so. and oh yeah King, kingdom bell coming soon put that out there nice nice kingdom bell. nice nice day <laughs> and don't forget to check out the podcast coaching out live every monday as well i'm gonna put that plug in there too yes yes i'll forget that put one that plug yes. in there too. yeah thank y'all thank y'all and we'll be right back <laughs>